Scott, what else do you hear or see? Well, we see a little bit of shifting towards that center aisle as that uh, moment's about to arrive. It really is going to be a sea of white you see along that center aisle on the Democratic side. So many of the women in the Democratic caucus have not only worn white uh, to mark the issue of reproductive rights, but they have moved themselves in unison towards the center aisle. There is a nationwide photo op that's about to happen, and it's going to be a seminal image. And Scott, is there anything not similar, but anything that is either from a clothing sartorial perspective or buttons or anything on the Republican side for an issue that they are either gravitating toward or want to bring attention to this evening? You're going to see a series of pins throughout this chamber. Republicans, uh, some in unison, have synchronized wearing a pin honoring a person named Lakin Riley, whose name was on legislation that passed the U.S. House this, this afternoon. Um, another marking, another bill over the issue of border security. And Scott, we have also been covering the protests that were happening outside and protests to the president's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. Do we see any uh, evidence inside the chamber of anyone um, resembling that kind of protest as well? Oh, it's a great question, Caitlin. It's been an open-ended question among Democratic staffers and members today. Is somebody in this upper level going to try to disrupt things? And we asked that question, and they asked that question because it's something that's happened at several events involving the president on the campaign trail and otherwise in the past few months. I'm also noticing one other thing, if I have the floor here for another moment. A lot of the retiring members of Congress are getting bipartisan send-offs and handshakes. Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi just embraced for a moment. Nancy Pelosi smiling at Mitch McConnell, shaking his hand, and some extended comments. Mitch McConnell, of course, announced he's no longer going to be leader after the end of this Congress. But I'm also seeing many of the retiring House members uh, bidding farewell to people, even though they've got obviously a few months left. And we've seen many of the House Democratic women wearing white. What's the message? On reproductive rights, they're yes. sending a message tonight. You'll also see a number of women in blue, and they say that they're wearing blue to show solidarity with Israeli hostages who are still being held in Gaza. Yeah. And you'll see uh, in among some of the Republicans, I just saw a few of them, they're wearing big buttons that say board, Biden's border crisis. They are trying to run on this as a crisis caused by the president's decision not to use executive authority. But the president has consistently said, including at the border when you were with him, right. he wants Congress to actually change the laws and Congress actually surge the resources and he'll bring it back to that bipartisan bill, which, as you said, was endorsed by conservative groups, including the right-leaning Border Patrol Union. And what better opportunity to go after a Congress that's done very little substantively, at least in the last year, than right in front of them and turn to the American public and say, it's their fault. This is one of the most scripted nights in American politics, but people <laughs> close to President Biden say, watch the unscripted moments tonight. Maybe the Republicans shout, maybe they point a finger. Now, you said Speaker Johnson told them to be civil, but it was last year when he had that feisty exchange with congressional Republicans that really set that State of the Union apart from others. And for tonight, I'm really watching as a reporter, what are the unscripted moments? Does President Biden actually take on personally, individually, some of these members sitting in the audience? Well, one